you remember the first thing you did when you realized this coronavirus was going to really impact the U.S.? Did you call a loved one or check on an elderly person at higher risk or talk things through with your children? Or maybe go buy extra groceries, supplies, sanitizer. Or if you work in healthcare, you may have known more earlier. You may have discussed precautions at work. If you serve in government, you might have been privy to earlier warnings and basically the preparations, which provide extra time to do any of the above. But do you know what some U.S. senators did when they got early secret warnings about this virus? They allegedly swiftly moved to profit on it, to either save or make money in their stock portfolios. This story tonight, right now, is the first Washington scandal of the coronavirus era. Obviously, it didn't take long. Now, here are the basics. Richard Burr, the Republican senator who leads the Intelligence Committee, got key coronavirus briefings way back in February and then made related trades, unloading $1.7 million of stock, including in key industries like hotels and resorts. NPR reporting that he grasped the seriousness of the pandemic, discussed his concerns at a private luncheon, while in public went on to tell a different story. He wrote in one article, the U.S. was better prepared than ever to face the coronavirus. Another senator, Kelly Loeffler, also allegedly involved in trading off this type of intelligence, selling millions in stock after a private meeting on January 24th, investing in companies that would go up in value from the pandemic, buying stock, for example, in a company that helps people work from home called Citrix, while still recently striking a very different note in public. The good news is the consumer is strong, the economy is strong, jobs are growing. Our president has done a fantastic job. Now, there are defenses to all of this. Senator Burr is insisting that he relied only on public information to make whatever trades he did. Leffler saying any decisions for her investments are made by third party advisors. But the outrage here is obviously piling up from anti-corruption experts, from nonpartisan good government groups who say the law shouldn't allow this in the first place, certainly from progressive critics, and criticism of all of this by an anchor that President Trump himself watches and tweets about, Tucker Carlson. Now maybe there's an honest explanation for what he did. If there is, he should share it with the rest of us immediately. Otherwise, he must resign from the Senate and face prosecution for insider trading. That's tough talk. This is a very important story, not only for what may be partly legal corruption that is revealed, but for also the spotlight this puts on the priorities of people who literally write the laws that govern us right now, that decide how your government and your tax dollars will combat this crisis. It reveals where their heads are at when they get this information and whether they do more, some of them allegedly, to make money off it while saying the opposite in public instead of looking out for you. And another thing I want to emphasize here tonight, the only reason we know about this is because of reporting and relatively recent legal requirements passed by, yes, the Congress. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, for example, pushed for this rule, and she argued back when this was a debate in Congress that, quote, politicians should play by the same rules as everyone else. Senator Gillibrand wrote part of the very Stock Act in 2012 that prevents and discloses some of this types of information and material trading. And we should note Senator Burr was one of a very few senators who voted against it at the time. He said he was one of the brave souls to push against this kind of disclosure requirement. I'm joined now by U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York. Uh, thank you for making time for us. Uh, there's many, many important things going on in your state uh, and around the country but it would seem that what has been revealed here underscores the need not only for what you fought for in, in disclosing this, but going further and preventing it. Um, walk us through your view of this tonight. So obviously it raises a huge red flag. Uh, the purpose of the Stock Act was so that members of Congress could not trade on non-public information that they received in the course of doing their job. Obviously the facts surrounding the trades by these two senators are deeply concerning. Uh, they were privy to non-public information far earlier than the typical American um, constituent. And it's concerning that they acted on that information and made trades that made them money. Uh, I think it needs to be investigated. It has to be thoroughly investigated. It should be investigated by the Department of Justice uh, to see if insider trading, in fact, did take place.
Can Congress simply ban any individual trading by its membership to, to get a, a basically a wider, brighter line around this? I, I think it should, frankly. I don't think members of Congress should be buying and selling stocks because even if they're not engaged in insider trading, so often it will create the appearance of impropriety. And Congress needs to improve its reputation, not continue to strain the belief uh, by the American people that we're doing the right thing, that we are doing what's in the public's best interest. Uh, mm. And ultimately, this all comes down to greed, and uh, that's one of the biggest problems we have in Washington, just the amount of money in politics, along with how this place runs, and even the most recent bill from Mitch McConnell. Uh, it's problematic. Uh, because of what Senator Burr said in public, there's an extra spotlight on it that goes not only uh, to the potential legal questions of, okay, did you go over the line, but also something that is obviously perfectly legal. Politicians can lie. We all know that. Um, but I'm curious, just at a level of policy judgment, whether you're concerned, given your work on this, about the distinction between what he did in private, which appeared to evince knowledge that this was bad and getting worse, and what he said in public. Um, we have some sound from February. Take a listen. There's one thing that I can tell you about this. It is much more aggressive in its transmission than anything that we have seen in recent history. It's probably more akin to the 1918 pandemic. NPR has that from him in February. We just showed, though, what he and others were saying in public after that point. What is your view of, of any potential problem there? Well, obviously, when members of Congress have a personal view and then they have a public view, it's not fair to the American people. And in this instance, if you actually profited on your private view and you did not disclose that to the American public, again, it's going to undermine people's faith that this government works for them. That's why they're so tired of politicians who say one thing but do the other. And so we need honest uh, politicians, people who put their constituents first. And both of these cases raise big concerns for me. Understood. Uh, and very interesting to get your view, as I mentioned, having worked on it. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here. Or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.